Hello everyone and welcome to a new In The Mail, the series that will touch both your passion for electronics and your bank account at the same time. We're gonna start with uh, this soldering iron tip for the uh, TS100 soldering iron. So this is the uh, TSBC2 tip and let me take it out of its uh, packaging so I can show you a closer look. By default you get this kind of tip and I ordered uh, this one. This could be like a more um, a general purpose soldering tip for more like for wiring jobs or repairs because I don't plan on using the TS100 for uh, everyday bench use but rather for remote jobs where I don't have my bench soldering station so this tip could cover a wide uh, range of joints it's about $10 to get one of these from Banggood, there are different models and I think you can also find them cheaper maybe on AliExpress but I'm not sure they are all genuine so just to stay safe I ordered mine from uh, Banggood. For those that are interested in professional made PCBs I would like to announce the sponsor of this video JLCPCB.com which is a professional PCB manufacturing service with very affordable prices. You can get 10 PCBs for just $2 and a stencil for just $6. I'll place a link in the description so you can check them out. Next I have some parts for my 3D printer. These are head nozzles and they have a 0.4 mm hole. They work for 1.75 mm filament and I've ordered a brass set and a st stainless steel set. Uh, brass is the standard head and that works fine but I have heard that for more abrasive filament you will need a stainless steel nozzle because the standard one made of brass will wear out faster. Now I'm still printing with PLA so I just fitted a new brass nozzle to my printer that's why there are only four here uh, but uh, these were cheap enough to order a set of each and have them around in case I ever decide to print on something else other than PLA. Next, here is an interesting item that uh, caught my eye while browsing AliExpress. So this is a uh, cabinet LED light and I think this could have been uh, pretty useful because it's common to have like a darker uh, room or darker cabinet and uh, it would be nice to have something like this to shine a bit of light so you can find what you're looking for. And I think it also has a nice convenient shape. You can uh, attach this. It has this back that you can maybe attach with a couple of screws to a shelf and then when the uh, door releases this pin the light just uh, turns on. Uh, but here's the problem with this design. It uses uh, one of those 12 volts batteries, the A23 type and uh, those are not so common so people don't usually keep those around the house. And another drawback of this kind of uh, circuit is that one of those batteries has about 50 milliamps of capacity. And this thing pulls about 20 milliamps, which could mean just two and a half hours of usage time out of one of those small batteries. So if you forget the door open, the battery will be gone pretty fast. I'm suspecting they went for the 12 volt battery because this way they, they can just connect the uh, three LEDs in series and they don't need additional circuitry to drive them, maybe a resistor, so they can make this very cheap and simple. But it would have been very nice if the cost of this would have been maybe a dollar higher and uh, it would use a simple AAA battery with a boost circuit. Next up, a simple item, but one that could be a problem if you don't have it, uh, like I discovered recently. So one Sunday, I was uh, happily working on the control unit for my DIY spot welder. So it was time to create the user interface and uh, add a rotary encoder for control. But instead of having one of these ready-made uh, and just connecting it, I had to take a perf board solder um, one of these rotary encoders, solder the uh, low pass filters, the debouncing uh, circuitry, the pull up resistors, a pin header and only after that I could start working on the actual firmware to read the rotary encoder. So I said to myself it would be nice to have one of these ready-made rotary encoder modules complete with the bouncing circuit and a pin header. So I ordered one of these 
to check it out and it looks good. Uh, it looks to have the low pass filters, the pull up resistors and I think I'm going to order a couple more just to keep in stock for those quick projects where you just want to hook up a rotary encoder and don't want to start uh, soldering one. Next, uh, I got one of these uh, soft pouches. I think they, they are designed to hold a uh, DJI Mavic Pro, at least that's what the eBay listing showed in uh, images. But in my case, I got it just as a general purpose uh, soft bag to hold stuff. I will be using it, for example, to hold my FPV goggles and similar gear. And uh, the main feature is that it has this uh, soft interior uh, coating that's going to protect stuff sensitive to scratches. So I guess you could use it for a variety of other stuff like camera gear, lenses, but if you're into that, you probably already have better storage for those items. Next, I uh, have some sets of screws. These are um, M3 by 40 millimeter and M4 by 8 millimeters. And I needed these for a recent upgrade on my uh, CR10 3D printer. I, I added two dampers to the Y-axis motor and a bracing uh, structure to keep the motor aligned because I noticed that when I added tension on the belt due to the uh, slack by the uh, given by the first damper installed on the motor, uh, it would bend slightly off axis. So this corrects that issue by bringing the motor into alignment while at the same time providing vibration reduction uh, with two dampers, front and back. Next up, a roll of uh, thermally conductive double-sided adhesive tape. So this is yet another roll of tape that I will be adding to my set of uh, technical tapes that I keep in the lab. Uh, this might be very useful if you're planning to attach a heatsink to a small IC, to a Raspberry Pi for example, and you don't have any mechanical way of attaching it. So this will stick the heatsink while at the same time providing decent heat transfer between the two parts. As usual, they don't give you too much info on the product page, no mention of the temperature range, no mention of the thermal conductivity, uh, but for hobby stuff, I guess it uh, should do the job just fine. Uh, I'm just hoping they uh, don't uh, trick us with some just some regular double-sided adhesive tape. I'm hoping this has some kind of uh, thermal conductive uh, additives added to the uh, adhesive tape. Next, I got myself a uh, CAN transceiver module. And uh, first off, what does uh, CAN stands for? Well, CAN stands for Controller Area Network and is a robust standard designed to allow devices to communicate with, with each other in uh, noisy environments over a two-wire bus. Like, for example, in uh, automotive applications, which is a very noisy environment, but you need a very high reliability. So this module contains two chips, uh, an MCP2515, uh, which is the bigger IC, and that is a CAN controller. It implements the CAN specification while at the same time offering an SPI interface. And the TJA1050, which is the interface between the CAN controller mentioned earlier and the physical bus over two wires. I recently saw some interesting projects which were using uh, CAN bus in a way or another. And I thought it, uh, if I ever have to work on such a project, I don't have a CAN interface that I can quickly wire up to see what's going on. Since these are fairly inexpensive, uh, it's worth keeping one around if I ever need it. Next up, a fairly interesting product. It's the Lychee Pi Nano. So as you can see, even the packaging is very small. But if we open this, uh, we discover a very small uh, Linux capable board inside. So the main module is about 35 by uh, 27 millimeters and it has these uh, castellated um, holes on the sides. These provide a bunch of IOs and connectivity. And this particular kit that I got features a 16 megabyte uh, flash chip and 32 megabytes of DDR memory. Uh, the processor is the, uh, let me see if I can get this on camera, is the uh, F1C100S from Allwinner. And this is a processor based on R9 architecture and it runs at 900 megahertz. On this 40 pin flat flex connector, you can apparently connect an LCD screen. 
I don't know if I have a 40 pin LCD around here, but uh, apparently there are a bunch of standard LCD modules that uh, it supports over this 40 pin connector, uh, like 4.3 inch LCD uh, TFT modules that have a 40 pin flat flex connect connection. I also received this uh, small uh, Wi-Fi module with, which has like a wire antenna and uh, it's based on uh, an SD card shape and I believe this plugs into the SD card interface so I would assume it uses that uh, SPI interface for the Wi-Fi module and you can't use it at the same time with the SD card but I have to look into this because I don't know much about it uh, but it would be interesting to get it up and running uh, because this thing would need very little power. And all of this was just $10 free shipping on Banggood. So it's crazy how cheap we can buy these Linux boards uh, these days. And for the last item in today's video, I have this set of uh, 24 pin flat flex connectors. These are 0.5 millimeters pitch and they are top contact ones. I have shown in a previous video that uh, a seller uh, previously sent me a bottom contact connector even though I was ordering a top contact connector uh, and um, I couldn't use that one but I've ordered again and this time the seller sent the uh, correct connector but only after I got these I realized that uh, the pinout uh, that I have designed into my PCB layout uh, will be reversed because I have designed uh, the pinout uh, without thinking that the flat flex will connect the other way around if it's a top contact so now I have to modify the PCB to handle these reverse connections uh, so I'll, I'll have to order a new PCB for the uh, project that I'm working on but uh, I'm happy that I have the right connector that uh, will be the the one used in the final project Thank you for watching, that was all for today. Let me know in the comment section if you found something interesting in this video. Maybe send me some feedback by clicking the thumbs up or thumbs down button on the video. And I will see you next week with a new video.